All right, so welcome to episode three of Get Up 10 Podcast. Here we are, number three. Three's like a number, I think. I don't know, but I'm happy with it. So, let me see if I can get rid of these comments on Facebook. No distractions. (laughs) No, but I just want to start off updating you guys with me and what's going on in my life, which... Sounds kind of crazy because my life is really not that exciting, but whatever. (laughs) So, um, lately I've just been working or adjusting to my new job, I should really say. And um, I'm in this like new program for new nurses, and they have us doing three weeks of eight hour shifts, then 12 weeks of 12 hour shifts. And I like my 12 hour shifts. Like, I really chose the right profession (laughs) with nursing in terms of that. But, um, yeah, right now this whole eight-hour shift thing, like, it's just, it's not for me. Like, I'm really not a Monday to Friday girl, and I don't even know when that happened. I think at some point in college, like, I just, it was too much for me. (laughs) I needed a day off. So, yeah, right now I'm doing the whole, this is my last week of the whole Monday to Friday grind, and, um... Thank God, because it's honestly so exhausting. Um, Also, I don't know how many of my listeners share this struggle with me, but okay, so here's the deal. When it comes to my scrubs, like my job, our tops are um, embroidered, so we can't really do too much with them. But like, you know, the pants and you try to save some money, try to be comfortable, whatever. You can get like whatever you want. So I... I'm not at my lightest weight right now, or I should say like my goal weight because I haven't been able to, okay, it's not that I haven't been able to work out, it's that I haven't been able to go to the gym like I've been wanting to. I could be working out at home, but whatever. So right now I'm not at my ideal weight. That being said, like I'm usually a medium in my pants, but they're kind of tight right now, so I had to go up some sizes to fit where I'm at right now which I'm not too far away from like where I want to be but you know for the moment I'm not fitting in that medium the right way so I'm really struggling right now because my pants like I don't know thick girl curvy girl problems like my thighs is great my waist is not and I'm just like uh, I don't know I just need to vent about that like I don't know if anybody else struggles with their pants but I definitely do and I heard fashion Nova's was good so I'm probably gonna need to try that soon but I need to vent about that because, you know, it's important. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, also, I'm looking forward to switching over to my 12-hour shifts because then I don't have to work every day. So I have time to, like, work on my podcast and my brand and so many projects that I'm really excited about. So that's another reason why I'm really looking forward to, like, the end of this whole Monday to Friday thing. I'm really not about this life. I'm really not. Also, um, today is October 1st. Yay! Um, This is, I don't know about you guys, but October 1st is, um, I'd say recently, like the last year or two, an exciting day because it means we're in the fourth quarter, guys. Like, 2018 is almost over, which is crazy. But yeah, like, we only got three more months left, so... It's really time to, like, make it happen. Like, all the stuff that you said you wanted to do in 2018, like, it's crunch time. And something awesome that I, this is my second year doing with my Breathe University family. Hey, shout out to y'all. We do the 100-day challenge. So, basically, we pick, like, four focus areas. Um, Like, this year, it's brain, which is personal development, the bag, your money, your brand, which is, like, your business. And then I think it's your body. So, like, you know, fitness or whatever. If I mess those up, whatever. (laughs) But, yeah, so we pick areas of our lives that we're going to work on for 100 days. And it's cool because we start now. Well, we were supposed to start a little bit earlier. But we started a little bit late this year. And so we start um, around this time of year. And then by the time we finish, we are around Christmas time in the new year. So whatever you did consistently for 100 days, it's becomes your present to yourself which is pretty awesome because I don't know 100 days in one way it seems like a lot but it's really not it goes by so fast and 
in a hundred days, like you can really make some changes to your life. So when I think about the hundred day challenge, I think about this quote that says, by the way, y'all, disclaimer, I got tons of quotes for y'all today. I am the quotes queen. So get ready. They're coming at you. But when I think about the hundred day challenge, I just think about this one quote that says, if you're persistent, you'll get it. If you're consistent, you'll keep it. And that's literally how this thing plays out because in the beginning of the challenge, you're like, let's go like a hundred days we're about to take over the world. Like I'm about to get it. My best body, my best bank account. Da, da, da. And you're just like so excited to change your life because that's really what the consistency will do for you. But so that's the persistence piece. But like the consistency, consistent piece comes in towards the end of the hundred day challenge when you're like tired, you're not in the mood no more, the motivation is gone and all that stuff is a discipline. So it's cool to just develop those things within yourself because um, what could, like it's pretty self-explanatory. Like persistency will get you what you want, but consistency will make sure that you keep what you want. So those are awesome things or um, qualities to have in your life for sure. They will bring you places. So it's good to have little challenges like these to exercise those things. Also, this weekend, I went to my friend Gasoline's house and we had some girl time. We had a tea party and ladies, I'm a big advocate of getting you some like-minded female friends. Like, I I know that in we have this whole idea of, um, I don't know that like girls are so complicated and we can't get along and all this pettiness and and whatnot but I'm here to tell you like forget about all of that that's all in your mind like it life is what you make it so if you want to say that girls are petty and hard to get along with well then yeah like you're gonna see that manifest in your life but if you believe that there's like-minded women out there who are mature enough to be able to have a great time together despite differences like you're gonna find that because I know I certainly have so, um, yeah, this weekend we had a little tea party and I don't know, I was blessed by it for real. Um, I, I honestly needed to get out the house too. So I was happy about that. Um, and I'm so proud of my friend for even like opening up her home to us and leading this little woman's group. Cause I'm really watching her operate in her gift and that gives me life. Um, when I see people doing their thing. So shout out Gusleen. This weekend was so much fun. Um, All right, so before I move into my main topic for today, I just wanted to shout out Shelly Shelton. Um, She's been such an uh, inspiration to me. Like, I look up to her so much. Um, Just, she is the, like, go-getter. Like I I said about, like, connecting with like-minded women, she has her community called Unstoppable University, And there's definitely some boss babes up in there. Like, if you're trying to elevate your life and get things done, like, um, I don't know, maybe your dreams, like things that you really want to do in life, this is the type of community you want to be a part of because it's, she's going to make you think about things and she's not going to just let you say, oh, I really love writing. I want to write a book and not do it. So I think that's awesome. And she also has her Shelton home staging. Um, So she's in Virginia. If you're in real estate or you just want interior decorating or whatever, you want your house to look nice, like she's in the business of doing that too. And she's doing a wonderful job with that. So I just wanted to shout out Shelly Shelton. Ooh, that was almost a tongue twister. Um, I love you so much, Queen. And thank you for all that you have done in a short amount of time for me. Um, So moving on to my main topic for today, I'm talking about pain. Yeah, (laughs) pain. So this is a topic that I'm actually pretty passionate about and I have not really gotten to talk to a lot of people about it because I mean, who wants to, let's just sit and talk about pain. Like who wants to do that? So, um, yeah, no, but despite what I just said, like pain is something that we need to talk about and it's so important because we all go through pain in this life like from from day one <laughs> like as soon as you come out of your mother's womb like you're like in experiencing things that you don't want to experience and that really just happens throughout life like pain is a part of life and a lot of times we don't 
shed the light that needs to be shed on it. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to talk about pain. And then part of me was like, I should wait until I'm going through something to talk about pain. But (laughs) keep it 100 with you guys, last week I was just not in the mood to be doing my podcast, my head. I was just an emotional wreck and I was just going through it. And so when I think about, in some way I was going through pain. So if I waited until I was in pain to talk about pain, I don't think I would have really wanted to do it. Um, But now that I kind of went through the pain and I don't know, but today I woke up feeling like I could just take over the world and I'm in a really good mood, but I'm still like really, I don't know. I just feel like I'm in a good mood or not a good mood, but my mind is in the right place to talk about this topic of pain. So um, that being said, I do have my notes as always and I've always been the type of girl that like when I have to do a presentation or a speech, I have my notes, but it's pretty much bullet points because I like to like go off the top of my head and just be myself with people. And (laughs) my aunt, she loves, I love her and she is one of my biggest supporters, but she's like, you say like too much on your podcast. And she didn't talk like that, by the way, but whatever. I was like, well, listen, I'm going off the top of my head. Like sometimes I need a moment to collect myself and sometimes that's just how I talk I don't know but anyways continuing on I don't even remember why I said that but oh because the point is for this topic of pain I do have a lot more notes than I normally like to have but it's because everything that I have written down is things that are important for me to say like I don't want to leave anything out because I really want to give you guys like my real thoughts like full full circle I don't know a to z whatever however you want to say it like I want to give you guys the whole thing I didn't want to leave anything out so if you're on Facebook and you see me reading that's why if you're listening to this podcast later don't worry about it (laughs) but um as humans we don't like pain like who likes to hurt like and there's different types of pain I also Side note, I think pain is really interesting because, you know, I'm a nurse. So um, as nurses, we look at the person as a whole, physical and non-physical and all that kind of stuff. And so obviously, like in the nursing field, we got to deal with people who are in pain. But there's different types of pain. There's physical pain. There's emotional pain. Um, Yeah, those are the two main ones I can't really think of anymore. But um, yeah, there's, there's definitely different types of pain. Um, and I've never met a person in their right mind that's like, yeah, let me go and go through it right now. Like, let's, let me hurt myself. Like 10 out of 10 pain right now. Like I'm loving it. I'm living life. Like I've, you have to be crazy. to willingly subject yourself to unnecessary pain. Like we don't like pain. (laughs) Like that's just our nature as humans. And so we tend to run away from pain. We tend to run away from things that hurt, from things that make us uncomfortable. Meanwhile, we're running from the very thing that we need. Like, real talk, guys, we need pain in our lives. I hate to tell you that if you didn't want to hear that, but it's the truth. Um, Like, if everything was just peachy keen all the time, like peaches and cream, like I love all these little peach things. But if everything was just rainbows and unicorns and sunshine all day, like, what would life be? Like, first of all, you wouldn't have no motivation to do anything better with your life because everything's already good. So what is there? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Am I right? And um, I think without pain, we would just be in this state of complacency. And complacency is a killer. Oof. I'm going to tell you, but not nah, like without pain, they would, we would just be <laughs> chilling all day, every day because why not? Like no pain, no problem. And yeah, so I, I don't know about you guys, but that's not ideal. Um, that being said, pain is actually a protective thing. We're so busy focusing on pain as a negative thing like something we never want to experience or go through meanwhile that pain is for your own good that pain is for your protection because when you're experiencing pain that's sending messages to you whether you choose to receive them or not so pain is either saying like stop or make a change um 
Pain can also mean that you're growing. And I don't want anybody to ever forget that. Like, pain can definitely mean that growth is happening. And, I mean, we all know the term growing pains. And there's also, um, I think about, like, when you get a cut or whatever and it's healing and it's kind of, like, itchy or sore as you're going through the healing process, yeah, that sucks. But you're getting better. There's growth taking place, like, new things are happening and so even though there's pain there's um good things going on like productive positive I don't know more p words (laughs) but um I just want you guys to look at pain from a different perspective so anyways oh I went to my next point without even realizing it but yeah the point is that like when you just see pain as bad gotta avoid it can't deal with it like when you just see pain through that one um, point of view or perspective, like you're doing yourself a, a disservice because pain has its purpose and pain can ultimately be positive. Um, so anyways, because we don't like pain and because we do not try to see pain as positive, we got pain killers. Or um, another way that we could say this is we self-medicate. It is what it is. We all have our, I don't know, in a watered down term, you might want to say a stress reliever, but sometimes we take these things too far. But anyways, um, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, drugs, alcohol, sex, adrenaline rush, distractions, like anything just to just take our mind off the fact that we are hurting, you know, just trying to like hide under a blanket or cover our eyes. So that or like alter our mental status, as we would say in the medical field, to not face the reality of like what's really going on. Um, And sometimes, you know, that can backfire on us because when you're numb, which is the point of these painkillers, when you're numb, you don't feel pain. And that is good and bad. Like, um, obviously, if you're going through surgery or like some something painful like um I don't know I'm gonna stick with my surgery example because that's really the best one like if you're going through surgery yeah you want those painkillers yeah you want the anesthesia (laughs) you do not want to feel what they're poking and prodding and cutting you with and nobody's mad at that we think you're probably crazy if you didn't want the painkiller you know so I'm not saying that painkillers are bad because they definitely have their place but on the flip side Painkillers, when you're numbing your pain, when you're hiding your pain, um, you could really just be hurting yourself and doing further damage to yourself. And um, the example that I want to use to show you guys this is getting burned. (laughs) Um, So let's say that you had no feeling in your extremities. If you don't know what that means, that's like your hands, your legs, your arms. (laughs) Those things. Yeah, so let's say you don't have any feelings in your hands and there's a hot stove, but you're numb. You have no sense of, you have you cannot receive painful stimuli. Like, it's just whatever. For whatever reason, you can't feel it. So you go and put your hand on a hot stove, but you have no idea. And so you stay there. And next thing you know, your flesh is burning. That's not a good thing. Like, obviously, in that case, you probably wanted to and should have felt the pain to make a change to protect yourself and preserve yourself. Um, Another example is, like, if you were on drugs and you had no idea, you were not in your right mind at all. And, I don't know, you're feeling invincible and you want to go jump off, I don't know, some, jump off a car. And then you fall, you do not land right, and you bump your head. All because you're so busy numbing your senses, which are there for a reason. And now you're hurting yourself even more on top of the pain that's already there. So point is, painkillers, good and bad. The whole idea of being numb in life, it has, it's, it's, um, times when yeah like you need to be numb to some things like don't be all up in your feelings let let things fall what is it the saying I'm always messing up my sayings y'all let things roll off you like water off a duck's back 
But at the same time, when you're just numb to everything and you don't want nothing to hurt you, that's not helping you either, guys. So I just want you guys to realize that there's a balance between feeling and numbing. Um, so my next points are that sometimes if you would just take your pain and ride through it, it would lead you to a beautiful place. Um, I was listening to, I love podcasts, by the way. Before I started my own, I've definitely been listening to them. So I was listening to Bigger Pockets podcast, which is a real estate podcast for beginners, which is really awesome. I love listening to it. Um, not only does it have the real estate content, but there's always like gems in there for life in general. So I was listening to this one episode and the guest said that people who cover up their pain rob themselves of the richness of transformation. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I really wish more people would realize that. You're so busy running from your pain because you don't want to be hurt. You don't want to suffer a little bit. You don't want to, like, go through anything. Meanwhile, you're robbing yourself of the beauty of transformation and the end product of that process. Like, and there's so many to blame for that but yourself because you're really in control of your own life. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, if more people would realize that there was something good at the end of their pain if they would just keep pushing the world would be a better place <laughs> um yeah and I just want to keep giving you guys examples so it's not just like over your head in depth stuff like it's tangible like realistic so um for example like like I said in the beginning kind of I used to be in the gym like all the time I love the gym like I'm a big advocate for Physical fitness, because, you know, you got to keep it moving. Move it or lose it. And it's just such good, healthy stress relief. <laughs> Keyword healthy. It's Your body really needs to be moving. Like, that's what it was made for, you know? And when you go to the gym, let's be honest, people hate going to the gym because it hurts. <laughs> Nobody wants to go through their day not being able to sit down, not being able to pick up a cup because their arm's sore, like... Can't even walk up some stairs because their legs are feeling heavy. Like, it sucks. It hurts. But on the other side of that hurt, in a couple days or whatever weeks, however long it takes, when you're not sore anymore and you look in the mirror and you, you know you're slimming down a little bit, you're getting cuts and stuff, you're not worried about that pain anymore. You're like, let's go. Look, I'm doing my thing. I'm out here shining my best life <laughs> and that's really the best example of how pain is supposed to well not the best example but a really good example of how pain is supposed to work in your life like you go through it and life rewards you for it like just like the gym um yeah but <sighs> I think that it's dangerous when you cover up what's really going on and I don't who told people that it's not okay to let people know how you really feel, to let it, that you can't tell people that you're going through stuff, that you're not perfect, that you had, you went through some stuff in life and now you got some scars. Like, I don't know why we think it's not okay to tell people that because meanwhile, you're so busy trying to act like you got it all together. Like you ain't ever been through nothing. Like you're a superman or superwoman and invincible and nothing could ever bring you down meanwhile like if you would just open your mouth and let people know guys I'm going through it right now guys this is happening it's really hurting me like I'm hurting right now uh, my heart is in a bad my mind whatever I'm in a bad place right now if you would just open your mouth and let let the right people know these things and there's always somebody who cares. I really don't believe that there's not. There's always somebody who cares. Like, if you would just open your mouth and let people know that you're experiencing pain, you would find out that maybe they are too. Or even better, you would find out that what you're going through is nothing new. And you're not the only one who's ever been through it. But there's somebody else who went through it too. And you know what? Not only did they go through it, but they came through it. And now they're on the other end. Like, you know how much that does to you? I, I, it does it for me. When I see that somebody else is doing what I'm doing and they made it through, well, you know what? I'm going to make it through too then. I could do this. Um, like, I love this one quote. 
that says something inside you is something inside is hurting you. That's why you need cigarettes or whiskey or music turned so loud that you can't think. Like, did you ever stop and think why you're doing certain things? Why you're hanging with certain people? Like, did you ever just stop and have a moment of silence and just ask yourself, like, yo, what? why am I doing this? Do I really need to be doing this? Like, what is this doing for me? Or did you ever notice that when you get upset, you run to a certain thing or person? Like, do you notice these patterns in your life? Because they're important. They'll teach you a lot about yourself. Or even, did you notice that when somebody tells you something and you don't like how it came out their mouth, you feel some type of way? Like, let me tell you something. The reason that what somebody else is saying is bothering you is because it's not really, it has nothing to do with them. It really has everything to do with you and how you're receiving that and what you've experienced. Because most people, like the things they say, it has nothing to do with you. It's a reflection of themselves. So when somebody says something and it bothers you, you need to ask yourself why. And let me tell you, you'll find out a lot about yourself and what's, like I keep saying, what's really going on. Um, yeah, so I think part of our issue with not letting other people know that, hey, I'm in pain or, hey, I'm hurting, um, part of where that that becomes a problem is because when you just take on pain, by yourself. I love the song by Erica Badu, Bag Lady. I love that song. Like, think of yourself as the bag lady. And every time you get hurt and you choose to, like, keep it to yourself, cover it up. Don't let nobody know how you feel. You know what? I'm hurting, but it's okay. I'm going to just keep drinking until I don't got to think about it no more. When you keep doing that to yourself, that's baggage. And so you adding and adding and adding to your bag collection and before you know it, you have so much baggage you can't go anywhere because you're so weighed down. Like, you're dealing with stuff that's out of your league. Like, okay, you were abused. You were raped. You got your heart broken. Like, did you ever think that some things in life are bigger than you and that's okay because they weren't meant for you to carry by yourself? So... I saw this quote and I, because I was doing some research for today, and it said, um, these mountains that you're carrying, you were only supposed to climb. And I thought, how awesome is that? That's something to think about right there. I'm going to say that again because I really like that one. These mountains that you are carrying, you were only supposed to climb. You were not made to carry mountains. That's not your job. <laughs> let God do that. Let somebody, like, I don't know, like if there's some super strong, let them do that. But us regular human beings, you are not made to carry mountains. Like, I don't care how strong you are. That's not what you were made for. But you know what you were made to do is climb mountains, get to the top, enjoy the view, let somebody else know it's pretty nice up there. And just enjoy the journey, you know? Like, that's really what mountain sins are for. Not to be carried, but to be climbed. And along the climb, oh my gosh. Again, I don't know about you guys, but I like to go hiking. And <laughs> I do some intense hikes. And it kind of hurts. I'm not going to lie. But when you get to the top of that mountain and you look at the views, it's awesome. And so it's the same thing in life. Like, stop holding on to stuff and piling it up and bottling it in when you weren't meant to do that. Like, you just do yourself a favor. Stop doing that. So, getting towards the end now. Um, when it comes to pain, feel it. I know that you don't always want to hear that, but feel it. Like, real, you know, cry, ev let every tear flow. <laughs> and trust me, it's hard for me to say that because I have a love-hate relationship with crying. Like, crying, it feels so good sometimes, but I don't want nobody to know. Even See, I'm telling you guys. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I don't want people to know that I'm crying. <laughs> like, that's not cute. But you know what? Sometimes you got to let it out. So whether you need to cry, whether you need to yell, whether you need to get yourself a journal and write out what's going on. Notice I said 
that get yourself a journal. I didn't say go on Facebook and Twitter and throw subs and shade and let think make people think that you about to lose it, you know? I mean, if you need to, <laughs> if you need some help immediately and you got to go on Facebook and just get that help real quick, I ain't mad at you. But if you know darn well you got a journal or some good friends in your life, why are you putting your business on Facebook? Like people are only making fun of you, honey. Like <sighs> help yourself. Please help yourself. Anyways, the point is, when you're going through pain, don't run away from it. Look it in the eyes. Feel it. Let it hurt. Because it's not going to hurt forever if you do it the right way. Um, I love this one quote. It says, let it hurt, let it bleed, let it heal, and let it go. That's literally what you're supposed to do with pain. Yeah, it hurts. And maybe we can't do anything in this moment, but it's not going to hurt forever. So let it hurt. Like, there's only but so much you could do to stop the hurting, you know? Let it bleed. Let it out. Let it flow. Let the tears flow. Yell. Lock yourself in your car. Scream. Write some letters and throw them. Whatever you got to do, let it bleed. Let it out. Then let it heal. This is the part that we're missing out on. We don't want to... We don't want to heal ourselves. I never understood why if we physically hurt ourselves, like from a scratch to like a twisted ankle to like, I don't know, you go out and broke your arm. You're not just going to, oh, my arm's fine. When your your bone is popped out and you're going to sit there like, oh, my arm is fine. I'm, I'm good. It's not even bothering me. What, what arm? I don't have an arm. Who has an arm? I'm good. Like, no, nobody does that. Like when you see, oh my gosh, my arm is broken. I'm in pain. I need help. You go get, ta- you go take care of yourself. You go straight to the ER. You call 911, whatever. And you go get the help that you need. And then when the doctor says, okay, yeah, da, 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 you broke your arm. So here's the plan of treatment. Here's how we're going to heal it. Take this medicine, do this, blah, blah, blah. Like, you do it. You want your body to heal. You don't, you're not like, oh, I, I hear what you're saying, doc, and that's cool. But you know what? I'm just going to pretend my arm doesn't exist. Yes, bleeding is cool. It'll be all right. Like, I'm going to just let it rock. You know? No, nobody does that. Like, you want to heal. You want to get better. You want to be your best self. You want the function to be restored. So if you can do that with your physical body, why don't you do that with the parts of you that aren't physical? When you sense that something isn't right, why don't you make the same efforts that you make to heal the outside on the inside? Heal your inside. Because... The outside is really just a manifestation of the inside. So if you're right on the inside, the outside is going to go so much better. And that's part of the problem is like half, not half these people, we're all walking around with messed up stuff on the inside and then it's coming out on the outside. That's why you can't get too caught up on the things that you see on the outside because people's actions, people's words, people's choices it's really just a reflection of what they got going on inside. And when you look at people like that, like it's a lot easier to not get so caught up on the outside and dig deeper and see what's really going on here. Because when you fix the inside, some things on the outside will also fix themselves. That's how it really works. Because if you just fix the outside, but you don't fix the inside, that's like taking a garbage can and putting a nice, like, cover over it with some flowers and stuff it's still garbage it still stinks I don't care how cute it looks it still stinks and that's what you are like a garbage can with a cover-up when you got stuff going on the inside that you don't take care of um so I'm gonna say it one more time let it hurt let it bleed let it heal and let it go take that pain and make a change that's the whole purpose of pain is so that you get to move in. <laughs> like you weren't made to sit still or stand still or be in one place your whole life. So take that pain that you're feeling. The fact that your mother wasn't there for you when you were growing up. The fact that that boy done broke your heart, cheated on you. The fact that your father was never there. The fact that you've seen things that you shouldn't have never seen in your childhood. The fact that somebody used you, somebody lied on you. All these things that we all go through in life that hurt you. The fact that somebody passed away that you loved. 
whatever it is that hurts you in life, take that pain and make a change. Embrace the process that you just went through with dealing with your pain. Because you know what? After you go through stuff, after you experience pain, you have a newfound strength because now you know you could make it through whatever. You have newfound knowledge because now you know, wow, that hurts. I don't want to do that anymore. Or there's a better way to do things. And now you got scars. And I want you to embrace your scars because you know what? We all have scars. So stop trying to act like you are a Barbie doll and you don't have no marks. And of course, I'm not talking physically here. But maybe, I don't know. I have some physical scars and... It is what it is. Physical and not physical. We all got scars in life. And stop trying to cover it up and act like you're perfect. Because you're not. But it's okay because I'm not either. And nobody on this earth is. And that is the beauty of humanity and relationship. Is that we get through these things together. And so, in closing, I just want to leave you guys with two quotes. The best way out is always through. And if the hurt comes... So will the happiness. Be patient. Whew, guys, I felt so good to let that out and just talk about this topic because I really feel like it's something that needs to be discussed that we don't talk about enough. So <laughs> as I get ready to leave y'all, I just want to do a couple shout outs. Hey. <laughs> First off, shout out DJ d Um, As you guys know, the holidays is coming up. If you need a DJ, He is the man for you. Like he, um, I actually do have some intros and outros for my podcast and he is one of the people that helped me to create one. So I can't wait to integrate those in very soon. And I'm just so thankful to be able to work with people who's operating in their gifts. So shout out DJ D-Dub. And like I said, he's one of the people that's helping me with my music. And I do have another one. Super honored to have Easy Zembi make some music like literally y'all he makes his own tracks like he's so talented so he made me a couple tracks for the podcast I cannot wait to use those bad boys like it's an honor to walk with people who's just talented and operating in their gifts I can't say that enough I also want to shout out Joe Fucarino I hope I didn't butcher your last name um his podcast is therapy without a degree dope human being um we're working on some things too so I just wanted to shout him out also, thank you to my lady lion, be your sister, Felicia. This girl has literally helped me so much in getting this podcast up and running. And just anytime I have a little technical issue or whatever, like, I'm like, girl, I need your help. And she is always there for me, whether she calls me back, she leaves me a voice message, a text. And not only that, but she is just so encouraging to me. I love the energy that she adds into my life. And I'm super excited to see her level up and walk in her gifts. She has a podcast too. Um, I have to get the name of it for you guys for you to check it out. But yes, you got to support each other. And also, I just want to shout out lastly, Ronnie, Mr. 5 Um, <laughs> Yo, he is another person that is like, I don't even know if I'd be able to do this on um, like... I don't want to say on this level because I'm really just beginning, but I wouldn't be able to bring this to you guys without him either. He's such a tremendous help to me and always supporting me and just encouraging me. So shout out to my number one fan. You're the best. <laughs> that being said, after all these shout outs, I just wanted to remind you guys, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. This has been episode three, the power of pain of Get Up 10 podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. I can't wait to see y'all next week.